You got that high that I really want. Even love trouble when the others don't. Your sweet melody plays all the time. Cause no kind of rhythm goes good with mine. So drop that beat that. Yo, Future, so my goal is to build a uh, pure peer-to-peer -peer economy, a brand new economy with a trillion dollar GDP or market cap by 2030. So you're gonna be hearing a lot about this topic. It's a stupidly audacious goal, but it ticks all the boxes of ego, legacy, and change in the world. Plus you get to operate outside the whole echo chamber that is startups right now. And it's way more exciting to say building an economy than a startup. And with blockchain-based developer platforms that have only just recently come out in the past year or two, for the first time in human history, it's now possible for an individual to actually build a brand new economy without being a government. Like, where the hell do you start? Like, oh yeah, I want to build a brand new economy with a trillion dollar market cap, a trillion dollar GDP. So, so where do you start? It's, it's really hard to find any resources. There's no tutorial on this. <laughs> I think the first thing you need to do is kind of like truly grasp from a mental mindset that um, uh, currency and all the, the entire economy that we live in right now is entirely make-believe. It's been invented. That in the history of money, there's some awesome YouTube videos on this topic. We actually began with credit-based systems where people would just give things to each other as they needed them and they keep track of like who owes what and then reconcile every month then gold and silver coins weren't really used by villagers or the common people. They were actually used by governments to pay for soldiers. So war was intrinsically linked to money. Money was created for war. And then the idea that all currency at right now is pretty much fiat currency, so it's not backed by anything. A lot of people still think that our currency is backed by gold. It's not. It's all floating. All the currencies are floating values. And then finally, when you understand how money is actually created in our economy today, it's created by banks. They loan out at a 9 to 1 or 10 to 1 ratio in a system called fractional reserve banking. Meaning you put a thousand dollar deposit into a bank, they can then loan out ten thousand dollars of that and literally they just create that money out of thin air. So they create nine thousand brand new dollars and just make it. So the bank has a legal right to be able to create money out of thin air and then they charge interest on that money they create out of thin air. It's a fucking rot, man. No one knows about this because we're not taught it in school, are we? And then of course there's all the economic theories and the differences, so the, the big ones are like Keynes versus Austrian, like Keynes versus Hayek. Um, I'm definitely from the Austrian economic side, the Hayek side, you know, self-organizing individuals. So right now we kind of live in a very top-down system, it's very much like a pyramid um, structure where at the top you have the government and banks kind of trying to pull all these levers to keep the economy in check, but it doesn't work. I think any type of top-down organizational structure, whether that's a business or a government or the economy itself, if it's designed that way, is inherently flawed because it's assuming that humans are intelligent enough to understand incredibly complex systems. It's often suggested that the busts and booms in our current economy are due to uh, government intervention because they're basically stepping in and trying to pull levers, you know, they're bailing out certain banks rather than just letting them die like natural evolution. Ideally, you want your economic system to be entirely self-organizing. You just want to create the initial rules that then cause the, the good emergent outcomes because there's absolutely no way the human brain can comprehend the complexity at scale. But clearly our current global economy has no real self-awareness, intelligence or compassion to it because there's people who are literally still dying of starvation and then there's people who have a ton of wealth. So this has got me thinking that perhaps we can build a blockchain-based economy that has these rules embedded deep into its code to actually enable self-awareness and compassion so it helps out people in need anywhere on the planet. If you're anywhere on the planet and you're unable to afford or access any basic human needs like food, shelter, water, you shouldn't have to wait for your shitty government to step in and help you or charity from others. I mean, why can't we have a global economy that is actually self-aware and compassionate so it understands when people are in poverty and it actually actively assists them and then it could also route resources to solve problems? I'm not entirely sure how to do that yet, it's still a work in progress. <laughs> um, but I definitely want these quote, these rules and these kind of like procedures inbuilt into it from the bottom up as a self-organizing system, not this top-down AI. If you can have an economy that has a global, kind of like social security net, social safety net, that catches people so that they're never in poverty, it's always like helping them out, then you don't need a basic income. I've actually kind of lost hope in the whole basic income thing because for governments to implement that, the only reason they're going to implement it is that the strain on their welfare system due to technological unemployment becomes more costly than a basic income. And of course it'll only happen in the rich western countries that can afford it, so it's going to happen very slowly, country by country. We need something, a global safety net, we need a global economy, a global compassionate economy. So this is just a bit of a mind dump, these aren't fully formed thoughts, so, so uh, thanks for coming along on the ride. Um, so what I've been trying to think about is like, what's the ultimate economy, what's the ultimate future you want people to live in, then work backwards. So I'm basically trying to do everything all at once. I think one economic, one system can actually solve everything globally and replace a whole bunch of inefficiencies really quickly. So let's go. Okay, so I want to get rid of governments and I want to get rid of businesses and I want to get rid of companies and marketing and advertising. Um, basically any type of like top-down organizational structure needs to go.
I want to absolutely obliterate nine to five jobs, traditional nine to five jobs. I think they are literally modern day in slavery and they're a type of psychological kind of torture. And I want to obliterate the entirety of the top down traditional education system. So that means all the universities and colleges, all high schools, completely gone. You should just learn the basics and go from there. And also obliterate all countries and all borders. They're unnecessary. We don't need them anymore. And I want a system where people are doing maybe no more than 10 hours of like paid work per week. Like, they, they shouldn't need to do any more than 10 hours per week to have all their basic needs met. But hopefully what people are doing every week won't feel like work. So people will still maybe like spend 40 hours a week doing stuff, but hopefully they don't feel like they're trapped into that. I want people to have idle time and enjoy their life. But at the same time, I want humanity working towards progress, like working on, you know, substantive problems, solving massive, big, audacious, hairy goals to propel humanity forward. And this economy also needs to be kind of like an AI routing system, recommendation system, because it needs to basically be connecting people who have problems to people who have skill sets to solve that problem and do it quickly. I talked before how there must be like a, over a million different web design companies and firms out there on the planet that have different uh, logos and branding, but they all do the same thing. That is really inefficient, terrible system. The system also needs to be innately aware of any problem in its system. So whenever a problem comes in or whenever it's aware of a problem, it should be instantly connected to someone who can solve that, whether that's a person or a machine. As an example, the economy right now has absolutely no idea that the biggest problem I'm facing is trying to find someone to move into my apartment to buy all my stuff so I don't have to move it. Wouldn't it be awesome if the economy knew that and instantly found someone? So this economy, not just a platform that's sitting on there that I'm running very top down, it's like deep inbuilt into the system. It needs to be aware of every problem that people have in that economy and all the people with all their skill sets. So that it can actually A-B test and bring problems and solutions closer together because you want to get to the point where anytime anyone on the planet has a problem, it's almost instantly solved either by a machine or person. And in addition to all of this and to make all this work, we need a peer-to-peer -peer education system. So no top-down education. Everyone has skill levels and they level up based on peer education, learning from each other. Not just one skill level. This is the reason why automation is a big issue because people do one task only. They, you know, you're an accountant, you're a lawyer, you got a degree doing one thing. This is why automation is scary. This economy needs to enable anyone anywhere on the planet from day one to basically go into the system, start off at level zero on any skill they're interested in and start doing tasks and getting paid and learning. The university college degree program has been broken for at least a decade now, but it's just kind of culturally ingrained, so we just go along with it. This new economy would actually tie education and work together, so you learn as you go. And this system is awesome because it basically creates an agile workforce, because everyone will have a varied amount of skill sets, and they get to pick and choose which skills they want to work on, so no longer are they forced to do things just for money. I'm also innately aware that this economy kind of like gradually needs to guide people across. Like the majority of the economy, majority of the workforce right now, they are comfortable with nine to five jobs. They're comfortable with being told what to do. So the system needs to do that. You can't just suddenly go, like, boom, here's this brand new economy and how we should work. Oh, look, money doesn't exist anymore. We don't need money anymore. <laughs> no, you've got to guide them across. You've got to say, oh, do this task. I'll pay you $10 an hour for it. And this is where it's really hard because you've got this vision of like what you want to end up at, but you can't design it from the top down. You have to start with very basic rules and then hope that it emerges towards that positive outcome. And that's with all of this, you have to work out how to build the backend system so it's really simple that anyone can plug into. I mean, you think of our current economy, the, the backend system really is the currency itself and everyone plugs into it. So yeah, there's some random thoughts. I think this video will be awesome to come back to in about five, 10 years and see how things changed. Um, so yeah, snap your thoughts. Add a comment at Future.